Hello and welcome to the field installation instructional video for the Metric Halo 3D upgrade for ULN8 and LEO8 units. In this video, we're going to take you through all the steps needed to physically install the upgrade in your box. We recommend watching this video at least once through in advance to know what's involved before you do the installation. Then when you're ready, just follow along, take it nice and slow, and we'll be up and running with 3D in no time. Let's get started. There is no soldering involved in this upgrade and no special tools are required other than a Phillips head screwdriver and a small pair of pliers or preferably a nut driver tool size 3 16 of an inch. And of course some trays for organizing all of our various screws we'll be removing. I'll be using a power screwdriver to make things go a bit faster. This is optional, but if you choose to use one, just be sure that when putting screws back in, you've set it to the lowest drive setting possible. Let's take a look at what comes with the 3D upgrade kit and make sure that we have everything we need ready to go. So we have 3D baseboard with pre-installed CPU module, MH clock board, and rubber feet on the bottom, new back panel, gasket board for repositioning the AES MIDI board, bridge board to connect the 3D board to your analog board, foam cap for the bridge board. If you're updating multiple units, we recommend doing them one at a time as each kit has components that are uniquely serialized for that kit. So you want to avoid mixing up the parts between upgrade kits. In particular, we want to make sure that the serial number on the 3D card matches the serial number on your back panel. So we want our unit to be fully powered down and to have no power or any other connections hooked up. The first step is to remove any rack ears you have connected to the box and set them aside together with their screws. Now let's remove the screws for the top panel case metal. There are three screws on each side of the case and six screws on the top that we'll remove. Remove the top cover, and before you set it aside, note that the underside might have at least one strip of masking. I have two on this one, but if you only have one strip on yours, just make sure that you line that up on the front of the unit when you put it back on. Next we're going to remove the back panel. We start by removing three screws from underneath it with our screwdriver. We'll put these with our other case screws. We have two more Phillips head screws, one on either side of the 4-pin XLR power connector to remove here. With your fingers, twist off the four ring nuts and set them aside. Using pliers or a nut driver tool, loosen and remove the 10 DB25 side screws and set them aside. Now the old back panel should slip right off. If you have a LEO8 with no mic preamps installed, at this point use your screwdriver to remove the cover plate for the mic input and put it right over the same hole on your new back panel. Looking at it from overhead, we can see the analog board, this large board on the bottom, and if you have mic preamps installed, they're here with the mic connector board. And in front here is the power supply board. All these boards are going to stay in place. We're going to be focused on this area here. And to start, let's just take this AES board and detach it. We're going to want to hang on to this board as it's going back in. What we can do right away is take our new gasket board and it attaches to the AES board like this. Make sure all these pins are lined up. and we can set this cluster aside for now. Next we're going to take out the Legacy Master Board and 2D Board. When we pull these two boards out, they may pop out still attached to each other, or they may come out separately, it doesn't really matter. First we'll detach the ribbon cable connecting the Master Board to the front panel. The Master Board down here on the bottom is connected to three metal posts coming up from the metal on the bottom. You can see this one here. 
It's typically not necessary, but if the legacy masterboard is particularly hard to get off, these posts can be narrowed with small pliers, just enough to lessen the pressure and allow the board to pop off. So we'll rock the 2D board back and forth, getting it loose from the pins on the analog board, and we can put a hand under the masterboard and pop it off those bottom posts. And if necessary, reach further under, pop it off some more, eventually that whole assembly will come out and we can set it aside. Now we're ready to place down our new 3D baseboard assembly. And we'll want to make sure this pops into place securely on all three posts. Now we're going to take our 3D bridge board for connecting the new card with the existing analog board. The orientation of this bridge board is absolutely critical. Notice the lip that hangs over one side with writing on it. This lip must be facing toward the back of the unit, toward the USB-C connector. There are two sets of pins on either side. We want to carefully line them all up with our bridge board. And once we can tell it's fitting smoothly, we can firmly press down so that the pins are no longer exposed. Again, this needs to be lined up perfectly. We don't want any bent or misaligned pins. Next, let's reattach the meter board to the pins on our 3D board that are in a direct line from the ribbon cable coming from the meter board. And make sure that's nice and lined up. Now we can take our AES board with the gasket that we put on and attach it so that this set of pins lines up and the DB25 connector is facing out. Even though it's seated now, it won't be solidly fitted until we reattach the back panel. So let's do that next. We'll slide the back panel on and replace the bottom three screws. For now, let's just screw in the two DB25 screws on the AES connector. At this stage, before we finish reassembling the unit, let's test it out. We'll attach power. And on the front panel, we're looking for the LED rings to spin up and for a jump on the input meters. And this would indicate that our 3D upgrade has been successful. If you get no lights on the front panel when you power on or any other unexpected behavior after carefully following the preceding instructions, please contact us at our support email address with the subject 3D field upgrade. So we've turned the box back off and removed power. Next, we can proceed in reassembling the rest of the unit by replacing the remaining DB25 screws. Then we have the two longer threaded Phillips head screws that go back on either side of the 4-pin XLR power connector. And then we have our four ring nuts on the back. Before we put the top cover back on, we want to take our piece of foam with an adhesive strip on it, just peel off the paper to reveal the sticky side, and place that sticky side right down on top of the bridge board. Just give it a little press, and when the top cover goes on, it'll press down on this foam a bit to ensure that the bridge board doesn't walk off. And just check to make sure you don't have any small bits of loose debris anywhere inside the unit. You can use canned air here or just blow it out. And there's one final thing we need to do inside the unit, which may come as somewhat of a shock, but this is going to ensure that when you power the box on, you don't get a loud thump in your speakers if they happen to be turned on before you turn on the unit. On the internal power supply board, this long rectangular board toward the front of the unit, right around the middle of the board is a Phillips screw, 
And right next to that screw is this lone capacitor with a silkscreen label in front of it that reads C15. We want to pinch this cap between two fingers and just break it right off and discard it. We can now add back the top panel and recall that the masking strip should be facing the front of the unit. We'll replace all our screws on top and on the sides. If you have an edge board, please see our separate video on installing edge boards. This concludes the installation. If you have any questions about any steps in this process or run into any problems, please reach out by emailing support at mhsecure.com.